Thank you, Dr. Leitner. Uh, capitalism requires that both the incentive to compete and the incentive to create coexist, each within the limits fixed by law. The tensions between these two imperatives has created many disputes. Uh, intellectual property covering computer-based and software inventions is particularly valuable. Although there are many upfront development costs, once the development costs are recouped, the uh, profit per unit is very substantial, particularly if the product is distributed electronically. As uh, Bill Gates, who endowed the building that we're in right now, had uh, once said, uh, after the costs of development have been recouped, every single additional unit is pure profit. Now, there's a substantial incentive to remain uh, co uh, creative. He did uh, then follow up by saying, if someone then develops a, a better product, uh, the demand of your product literally drops to zero. In order for software companies to remain competitive, they must continue to be creative. In order for them to recoup their investment on their creativity, they have to be able to obtain some exclusivity to their creativity. They therefore look to intellectual property laws, uh, particularly copyrights and patents. Uh, the rewards for creativity can be very substantial. Uh, the most valuable assets of Microsoft are its intellectual properties. Uh, IBM generates a $1.1 billion in revenue each year from its intellectual property portfolio. Uh, this is income it generates even aside from its hardware and software business. It's no coincidence that in the last 11 years, uh, IBM uh, obtained more patents than uh, any other company from the U.S. Patent Office. In 2003, IBM received 3,415 patents, which was 70% more than the runner-up which was uh, Canon. They uh, obtained a mere 1,192 patents. Uh, the patent and copyright statutes uh, are derived from the constitutional clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8. Uh, the Constitution authorizes the Congress to enact legislation to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. That's uh, directly out of the Constitution, and it's not an amendment, first draft. Uh, so uh, we can see that uh, there was an incentive at the time the Constitution was uh, drafted to be creative, and the incentive was uh, monetary, uh, to award uh, the uh, creative person with some exclusivity. Uh, since the first patent statute was enacted in 1790, there's been a need to accommodate uh, the patent statutes in order to uh, enable people to uh, obtain some exclusivity. Uh, at the time the uh, statutes uh, were first enacted, we were an agrarian society. Uh, the, um, uh, the technology that people relied on to uh, obtain any print medium was the printing press in the 1800s. We had the Industrial Revolution. Uh, in uh, the 1900s, we saw the uh, uh, computer uh, Industrial Revolution. Uh, in, in the second half of the 19th century, as uh, the computer industry evolved first in the area of hardware and then in the area of software, there was a need to protect the creativity of people who were active in uh, computer science. At first, software developers looked toward copyrights. Uh, as time went on, we saw that there was a void in the, uh, in the protection uh, based on the case law, so they began to look toward patents. Let's uh, look uh, first uh, at copyrights as they pertain to software uh, products and particularly uh, uh, programs. Copyrights protect an original work of authorship fixed on a tangible medium. Now, original work of authorship uh, just uh, means that that's the creative part. Fixed on a tangible medium means it has to be something that's fixed. Uh, copyright applications, by the way, for computer programs uh, can be obtained from the Copyright Office website. Uh, you can uh, get it relatively easily. It's, uh, if you go up to www.copyright.gov, go to Forms and TX. Now, uh, a computer program was uh, not uh, uh, understood to be copy, uh, copyrightable early on in the century, particularly if the computer industry was started. There were some questions. Uh, the copyright statute was uh, changed in the 1970s uh, around 1976, the copyright statute was amended so that in uh, 1978, the statute went into effect. And although the statute did not specifically state that computer programs are copyrightable, uh, the statute did define 
the term a copyright program. And the legislative history, the Senate and House uh, reports tended to indicate that it was the intention of the Congress to uh, provide protection for uh, copyrights, uh, uh, copyright protection for computer programs. Uh, the, the, the statute defines a computer program, although it doesn't specifically state it's a copyrightable subject matter, but it defines a computer program as a set of statements or instructions to, the, to be used directly or indirectly in a computer in order to bring around about certain results. Fair enough, it's a set of statements. Now that term set of statements is rather uh, If you go up to the Copyright Office website, you want to register the copyrights to your computer uh, program, what you would do is uh, go to forms and click TX, which is text. And if you uh, go to uh, that section of, of the, the text, uh, of those forms, they give you an instruction on how to obtain copyright registration of your computer program. In fact, the first uh, section uh, talks about uh, when to use this form. For literary works, excluding periodicals, fiction, nonfiction, they give a whole list. And at the very end of the list is computer programs. So the Copyright Office assumes that a computer program is just like a novel or, or uh, maybe a textbook. It's a set of statements. And um, uh, you can follow the instructions. It's just a two-pager, front and back. You fill it in, send them in a, uh, a printout of your, uh, uh, of your program. If it's uh, too voluminous, you send them the first 25 pages and the last 25 pages and $30, and soon you too will be the proud owner of a copyright registration. Uh, the uh, registration uh, ha has uh, certain presumptions, and it's uh, very useful and important if you have to ever have to sue an infringer, which I hope you never have to do. Uh, one of the basic principles of copyright law is that it provides protection for the expression, not the idea. What does that mean? It's, fixed, it's something fixed on a tangible medium. The creative portion means it has to be an original work of authorship, and it has to be fixed on a, ten, you know, on a tangible medium. In fact, the statute actually defines things which are not protectable based on copyright law. It's like uh, the, pa uh, the patent statutes talk about what's protectable based on patent law, but they don't have anything like uh, in the binary zero category. But the copyright statute does. It, no case does copyright protection for an original work of authorship extend to any idea. Well, uh, idea means just like that, a concept. But uh, there's some more text that is much more relevant to computer program copyright litigation. Procedure process, system, method of operation, concept, principle, or discovery, regardless of the form in which it is described, explained, and so forth. So the copyright statutes specifically state methods, processes uh, are, are not copyrightable. 